we've got some chili flakes that's gonna just be the all-purpose spice booster and this is important chili vinegar okay and it's basically chili garlic and vinegar that I blended in the blender I'll include the exact recipe in the written portion and this is going to make a big difference. It'll add sort of a spicy, acidic boost that's going to take it from like, oh, that's really nice to, mmm, that is really nice. So, by the way, you don't have to have all of this. It's just all showing you what you would get normally on the street. Just pick and choose what you want, what you want to bother with, and if you don't want to bother with half of it, then don't. Okay, Thai basil, you can also use holy basil, and that's basically just for people, it usually comes on the side so people can take off the leaves and mix it in and let it wilt in the soup as they're eating. And pork skin, crispy pork skin, or what we call cap mu or chicharron. It's usually on the table, kind of like a mini bar. If you open the bag and eat it, they'll charge you for it. If not, then it just sits there. But I think it's kind of a nice thing to munch on as you're eating the noodles. You take a bite of this munchy thing. Oh, it's so good. Nowadays in Thailand, they like to have also crispy fried salmon skin you know, for the more gourmet boat noodle stand. So that's an option for you as well. One of the most important ingredients for this is, this is fresh blood. Now, don't be grossed out. I know some of you were like, ah! Um, it's, not, it's not that bad. It's, it makes a big difference. It's basically going to be a thickener and it's gonna make the soup rich, okay? And now this came frozen. It's beef blood, because that's all I can find. You can also use pork blood. Um, I've never used chicken blood, so I'm not sure how it's going to turn out, but it's probably going to be okay. Whatever you can find, um, you can leave it out. We're only going to use like a tablespoon per serving, so it's not like, you know, the whole soup is made of blood. So it's not a big deal if you can't come to terms with it and you want to leave it out. However, if you still want the soup to be rich without the blood, you can add a little bit of coconut milk. I've seen people do that, and I think it's going to be just as nice. But if you want to go all out in authenticity, Get yourself some blood. Vampire noodle soup, I think I called this at one point. Okay, last, last but not least, are noodles. So you can use any type of noodle theoretically for boat noodles, but the most popular kind is what we call sen lek, and that's this stuff right here. It's the same stuff that you get in Vietnamese pho, and it's rice noodles. It's what usually is labeled as small size, it's one and a half millimeters wide. It is smaller than Pad Thai noodles. And that's an important point because personally, I don't think for boat noodles, big noodles don't taste very good. So we've got that. So what you want to do with this one is you want to soak it in water for 10 to 15 minutes just until it's soft and pliable. Okay, just until it's pliable, then you're going to take it out and let it sit, hang out in the fridge until you're ready to use it you can over soak it and here's what's going to happen it'll absorb a lot of water too much water and then when you go and cook it and put hot soup over it it's going to just it's going to be overcooked it's going to swell remember we're not frying these so it's going to cook a little bit further in the bowl if you're using sen mi, which is the other option that I really like, which are these, these are also rice noodles. They're very, very thin. They're the smallest, they're as small as they come. These are really easy to find. You just have to soak these for five minutes, okay? Again, just until they're soft and pliable, drain them, and then they're ready to go. So I think that's all the ingredients, believe it or not. I'm tired just talking about them. But it's gonna be easy and it's gonna be well worth every single minute. So let's put it all together. Oh, this broth smells so good. This place smells incredible right now. So it's been an hour since we added our seasoning. It's got time to simmer and now just check out this beautiful broth. Oh, this is it right here. This is just good on its own. Mm. Okay, we're going to taste and adjust because I know this is not where it needs to be yet. Mm. Mm. That is very good. But there is a bit of an art to tasting boat noodles. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. And I leave the salt to the end because you can't 
you never really know how much liquid you're going to lose when you're letting it simmer. So there is a chance that you don't need any added salt or there's a chance that it has become too salty. And if that happens, you've just reduced it a little too long. Just add a little water. It's not a big deal. So I'm just going to add a little bit of salt. When you taste boat noodles, remember that this is going on top of noodles and vegetables, both of which are going to are going to dilute the concentration. So when you taste it, it should be wow that is good like it should really kick you really wake up your senses because it will get toned down by the vegetables and whatnot now if you're cooking this just for yourself or just for two people you can add the chili vinegar right away and adjust it there but if you're cooking it for other people i like to leave it on the side and then they can add it to their soup as needed because some people just like it a little milder right so you never know and that's why um, noodle shop in Thailand they'll have you see they'll have all sorts of table side condiments so that people can adjust accordingly so I'm gonna give this a good stir by the way see all these bones there's a lot of meat on it and so I'm not gonna throw it away when I strain this I'm going to pick off all the meat and eat that with my soup so here it is your the Thai street vendor selling boat noodles. So I've got water is boiling. I've got my noodles, which I've soaked. So this is one portion. With boat noodles, they're usually really small portions. People eat two, three of them in one sitting. You can make more if you like. Um, I'm gonna put in also my bean sprouts and my spinach or whatever vegetable you're gonna use into my noodle strainer. It's a good idea to have one of these or something that'll serve the same function because you'll see this takes five seconds. You're gonna go in, Count one to five, and done. Okay. Nung song sam si ha. Boop. Done. And you're like, what? That's it? Yes, that's it. And if you see street vendors, that's how long it takes. Because remember, this is gonna see hot soup again. So it's going to continue to cook. And then I'm gonna put in some of my garlic oil that I used to fry my garlic in. And that's only because. I'm not ready to put my soup on yet. I still have to heat it up. If you are ready with your soup right now, you don't have to put it on just to prevent the noodles from clumping together. Because I was going to put the garlic oil on top eventually, so I might as well do it now. Keep things from sticking. Oh, the garlic smell. Mm, I can smell it right here. Okay, got that. I'm also going to add my chili vinegar right now, just so I don't have to stir it. Then when I add the soup, it'll stir right in. Ooh. That, that's like my favorite part, so I like to add a lot. Okay, this is the moment. This is the moment of truth. Okay, so I've got my soup, which I've transferred into this small pot here, and I'm just gonna add my meatballs so it can heat up together. I'm just gonna do four. And then I'm also going to add my pork, my marinated pork, which as I said, they're optional. You can have either or, meatballs and pork. Put it in there. I'm gonna let that cook. Okay, so the pork is now pretty much done. So what you want to do now is go in with your blood, if you're using blood. I'm going to put in just about half a tablespoon or a tablespoon. The amount is optional. The more you add, the more sort of thick and rich it's going to be. Again, you can also do coconut milk at this point. When you add blood, you want to make sure it is stirred right away because it'll cook and set immediately so if you don't stir you get big clumps and it's not a nice texture so I'm gonna go in you know what I'm gonna use the spoon and stir pour it in and stir as I pour rinse my ladle you see how that just thickened into this beautiful thick broth yeah that is the doing of our blood now that's pretty much it that's done now I'm going to pour over, yes. And this is why it's so important that you don't overcook the noodles beforehand. You wanna undercook it because by the time you sit down and eat this, you know, it'll be perfectly done. Okay, mmm, that's good. Top it off with my crispy garlic that I fried, oh yes. Um, what else am I missing? Ah! Cilantro. <laughs> I forgot about that. You can roughly chop it. I'm just going to roughly tear it. Get that burst of cilantro aroma on top. Oh, yes. If you want, you can put some Thai basil, as I said before, but I'm going to be good without it. 
And now it is the moment of truth. It is time to eat. Let's see how it is. Yeah. Mmm. 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 Super tender pork. Super tender pork. You know what it needs? It needs a little bit of extra chilies. And this is roasted chilies that I made myself and I ground it up with some toasted kefir lime leaves. Mmm, even better. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now with that kick of, of chilies, it is perfect. Trust me, if you've ever had boat noodles in Thailand, this will be just as delicious, if not even more delicious. If you've had, if you like Vietnamese pho, I promise you, you will love this one. So please do give it a try. I know it looks like a lot of ingredients, but it's really not that much work. Just let it go, let it simmer. And all the assemblies are really quick. I would love to see photos. If you make it, you can post it to Instagram. You can post it to my Facebook, Twitter, whatever way you'd like. If you enjoy the show, please click to subscribe so I can keep doing what I'm doing. And the full written recipe for all of this will be on hatthaikitchen.com. And I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.